All right, hi everybody. This is John Kilkenny. I'm the director of the Swanee Summer Music Festival. I'm really happy to have uh, with us today Nancy York, who's Associate Director of Admissions for the University of the South. And she's here with us today to talk about the admissions process for uh, the University of the South. So enough out of me. Uh, Nancy, thanks for being here. And um, let's let me let's learn. Great. Thanks so much, John. Um, and thank you all for taking the time to join me and uh, watch this short video about applying to Swanee. I hopefully will give you some tips about the application process as it relates to Swanee specifically, but then also share information with you about applying to colleges in general. Um, but we'll start with Swanee and dive right in. So Swanee is a common application school and many of you may be familiar what that means. Um, there are hundreds of schools across the country that are associated with the common application which is a platform that's designed to allow students to apply to a number of different schools, for the most part, only once. Um, so essentially what that means is you'll enter a lot of information into the common application, and you'll never have to enter that information in again to the, let's say, four or five different schools that you're applying to. Some schools will have supplements that you'll need to complete, perhaps a number of different essays or um, a short questionnaire that you'll have to answer. But at Swanee, we don't have any supplements. So the one essay that you write for the common application is the only essay you'll write for Swanee. So we're on the common application, there's no supplement, and it's also free to apply. So we do our best to really streamline um, this process for you and yeah. allow as much access as possible um, you know, so that you can complete this application process easily. Um, we understand how stressful applying to college can be. Um, we do our best as admission counselors to alleviate as much of that stress as possible, but um, stress stressful it still can be. So um, Swanee in this way is trying to do our best to um, streamline again that process as much as possible. Within that common application, there are going to be a variety of things that you will need to complete and submit. Um, and two of the most important things are um, your extracurricular section and the essay portion of the common application. Um, so I'm gonna briefly talk through those for you um, right now. So within the extracurricular section of the common application, you'll see around 10 spaces for you to list all the different extracurricular activities that you've been involved in. Um, not only will you have space to list those, but they'll also be space for you to give us a little bit of additional information about um, how you've been involved in those activities, um, whether or not you've held a leadership role um, or done something you know, specifically special within that organization. Um, let's say you're a violinist in a local youth orchestra. Perhaps you are um, the concert mas master or concert mistress of that orchestra. That might be something that you list there. Um, I want to give a note that I think a lot of students get some anxiety around extracurricular activities in high school because there's this idea that you need to be an incredibly well-rounded student. And we certainly like to see students who have varied interests and who've been involved in a number of different activities, but I want to let you know that we also value students who are exceptionally talented at one thing. Um, you know, as musicians, you are putting in a lot of work uh, in honing your craft um, and certainly are probably involved in music in a variety of different ways. So don't worry if that is you know, going to take up the bulk of the extracurricular activities that you've done. We understand that. We understand that type of time commitment. But if you have additionally done volunteer work or maybe you also play a sport or are involved in a few clubs in high school, do list those there just so again, we can see uh, the type of interest that you have and the involvement that you've had in high school. That's going to give us a sense as well, perhaps, of how you may show up in our community and what things you'll bring to our campus and of course to other campuses as well. The essay is also a really important part of your application. And one of the reasons for that is it is something that you are submitting to us in real time. You've, at this point, by the time that you're submitting applications, you have, for the most part, done all of your extracurricular activities. Of course, you'll have some in progress, but for the most part, you've finished that part of your application. You've also already taken most of the classes in high school. You may or may not have taken your final ACT or SAT test at that point, but your essay is something that you are doing right then. So it's giving us a current, up-to-date window and insight into who you are as a student. 
in addition to, of course, giving us a glance into your writing abilities as well. Um, and certainly we always love to see that when it matches up to what's reflected on your transcript as well as it relates to potential grades that you may have earned in your um, English or creative writing classes or of course in classes like AP US History, where you're certainly going to have done a lot of writing there as well. A few tips about um, writing the essay, try and start early and start early with a brainstorming session or by working through a brainstorming phase. That means that you'll hear a lot of people encourage you to start writing your essay, maybe your junior year or the summer between your junior and senior year. And that's really good advice but sometimes putting pen to paper at that point or uh, fingers to keys on your computer um, can be daunting, challenging, and quite frankly, something that you may just not want to do at that stage uh, during uh, you know, the summer leading up to your senior year. But one thing you can do is brainstorm about what you will write about in that essay. The Common Application every year will submit the various essay prompts that are available to students to use. And every year, the Common Application goes live on August 1st. However, you are able to go and access online all of the previous prompts that the Common Application has used, at least in the previous year and sometimes in past years. So that'll give you an idea of what essay topics you may be using this year to write your essay. But I would also let you know, too, that once you take a look at those essay prompts, you will realize pretty quickly that you can write about just about anything you want to. So my best advice to you would be to choose what you want to write about first, choose something that you know well, something perhaps that you're passionate about, something that you can write about fairly easily, and then perhaps fit that into your topic instead of trying to pigeonhole a topic into a specific prompt. Hopefully that'll be helpful advice. The last piece of advice that I'll give to you is do your best to be as vulnerable, vulnerable as possible when you are writing that essay. That can be challenging for everyone, not just high school students. It's something that's challenging for me sometimes, certainly in writing as well. And when you're imagining crafting an essay for a group of people, admission counselors, that you have perhaps never met before, that may be even more of a daunting task. But the reason why vulnerability is so important is that we need to be able to understand who you are as an individual and things that perhaps will um, set you apart from other students who are applying. You'll hear the word unique tossed around a lot during the process. Um, and while sometimes it's uh, difficult to imagine yourself as a solely unique individual, I can tell you that the way that we experience things as individuals, even if we're experiencing the same event, we're each going to have a different takeaway from that and a different understanding of how that experience affected us, affected those around us and those in, you know, rest, in the rest of the world. So perhaps if you are writing about a trip that you've taken or a summer camp experience, remember that your perspective, even though you might be sharing the same topic with someone else, um, is going to little, look a little bit different through your eyes and through the way that you are writing about it if you allow yourself to really reflect on that and be vulnerable. There are lots of great resources online that you can use to craft a good essay. Um, one is the College Essay Guide. Just type that into a Google search and you'll find a variety of different resources that Ethan Sawyer has put together that are all free for you to use. Um, great um, different activities that you can put yourselves through, brainstorming, writing, other things like that. But College Essay, it's collegeessay.com. Go check it out um, and definitely feel free to use that as a resource during, during the process. After you've submitted your common application, we're also going to require a number of different things from you as well. Um, one of those things is going to be um, a transcript. And that's something that we are going to request from your college counselor at your high school. Um, so you're definitely going to want to let your counselor know what school that you're applying to so that they know where to send the, uh, your transcripts. Um, your counselor is also going to send a school report as well. And that school report is going to include some demographic information about your high school. And let us know, for example, what types of courses your school offers. Does your school offer honors, AP, IB classes, or maybe even none of the above? And that's information that's going to be helpful to us as, you're review as we're reviewing your transcript. You'll see here on this slide some information about the average GPA, um, ACT scores and SAT scores for incoming Suwannee students, and then also to our acceptance rate as well. Um, the GPA, as you can see, is an um, average of a 3.74, but I want to make sure that you understand that we're not simply looking at that bottom line GPA, 
but rather more importantly, looking at the rigor of your curriculum and then also to the specific classes that you've taken um, and how well you've done in those classes. So you know, I'm sorry, I think I don't mean to interrupt you because this is great and I'm taking notes and I, I can't wait to talk to some of my students about this, but I just want to underline that GPA point one more time because I, I work with a lot of students in a lot of different places and they always sort of cling to that number in a way. And I know you know this, so I just I just want to underscore it and just for, for especially for Swanee where I don't know as much about the admissions process here as I do at my other institution. Um, just really underline that 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 number because it, it can be so deceiving with students that take a lot of classes one direction or another um, that they might feel that their that number matters more than it does or not enough. So right, just to uh, underscore that. Yeah. Yeah. No, and thank you, John. That you're you're absolutely right. And so again, just just to reiterate, we're not simply looking at that GPA now. Let it be known, there are some schools that will take that GBA and will take your test score and they'll put that into a computer and they'll make an right. admission decision. Especially at small liberal arts colleges and especially at Swanee, that is not something that we're doing. We take what's called a holistic approach, the review process. So we are looking at everything that you are submitting. Um, and what's really important to us is what we're seeing within your transcript. Um, and again, that has to do with the rigor of your curriculum. So how many AP, IB honors courses you've taken. And then also to, of course, how well that you've done in those individual classes. It's important to note, though, going back to that school report, that we're only looking at your transcript within the context of your school and your school's curriculum. Mm -hmm. That means that if your school does not offer AP or honors classes, we don't expect to see those classes reflected there. We also recognize, too, that schools calculate GPAs on a wide variety of scales, anywhere from 4.0 to 5-point scale, 6-point scale, sometimes even a 12-point scale. <laughs> so recognize that we understand that that number is not necessarily the best way to evaluate a student's academic ability. So please do keep that in mind. Um, you know, as you're considering how we are looking at that GPA. And also recognizing too, it's just one piece of your application. It is not the end all be all. Um, your transcript though, of course, is the main way that we're going to be able to assess your academic ability and whether or not uh, you may be successful in Swanee's uh, rigorous academic environment. In addition to that, another way that we might uh, gauge, you know, your academic ability is maybe through a test score. So you may choose to submit your ACT score and your SAT score. We do super score both, meaning that we take take the highest section from each seating of the exam and pull those together for a composite score. You can see there the middle 50% for the ACT is a 27 to a 32, and for the SAT, it's a 1250 to a 1390. Um, so keeping in mind there those um, you know those different scores, but also recognizing too, Swanee is a test optimal school. So you don't have to submit standardized test scores if you don't want to, and that's okay. And actually between 25% and 30% of our applicants every year uh, will choose not to submit their test scores. And um, especially this year uh, with COVID-19 and the landscape that we're in, you're seeing a lot of different schools go towards the test optional route uh, because of um, you know trouble with finding access to the SAT and the ACT, at least on a regular basis, um, and recognizing too that um, as they potentially go virtual, that may present some challenges for students. So you'll see a lot of more, a lot more schools going test optional, but recognize that Suwannee has been test optional since 2009, so for over a decade now. And that should let you know that test optional, um, I think, is the biggest indicator uh, of the fact that Sewanee really is looking at everything that you're submitting and is not simply taking numbers, uh, you know, from the academic portions of your applications and making uh, decisions about uh, your admissibility. Um, if you are thinking about test optional, a good rule of thumb is if you feel as though your test score is not an accurate representation of your academic ability, don't feel like you need to submit your test score. Um, there are no additional requirements that you'll need to complete in order to be able to be considered as a test optional applicant. Some schools may require um, an essay or perhaps an interview. Suwannee does not require any of those things. You simply will check a box on the common application saying that you do not plan to submit your scores and we don't expect to receive those. 
if for some reason you had already submitted your scores to Suwannee, maybe you took a test as a junior, you choose as a senior that you do not want us to consider those scores, you can check a box on the application saying that you don't want to submit your scores and they'll be removed from your file. So it's not something that we'll be able to see during the admission process. Good rule of thumb is though, to not have your scores sent to individual schools until you're ready to do so. That's something you can certainly do later after you've taken the test and gotten your scores. So consider test optional. If you have additional questions about that, please feel free um, you know, to always reach out to your admission counselor at Sewanee. Um, we'll be happy to help you with that. Um, the other thing I'll note too, is that we will require two recommendations uh, as a part of your application. So one from a teacher and then one from your college counselor. Um, as far as teacher recommendations go, I would encourage you to ask for those recommendations early. Maybe prep your teachers that you're going to be asking them for a recommendation in your junior year, but at least at the start of your senior year, go ahead and make that request because some teachers are going to receive a lot of those and you want to make sure that yours doesn't get lost um, kind of in that process. You may choose to ask a teacher to write a recommendation uh, from a class where you've done really, really well. But it may also be that you want to have a teacher write a recommendation for you from a class where maybe you struggled a little bit, but you still showed up to every afternoon tutoring session. You always turned your homework on time. You were engaged in the class. You just struggled with, let's say, uh, honors chemistry, and that's okay. Uh, but maybe you have that teacher write that recommendation because you're an A and B student and your C in chemistry is not an accurate representation of your academic ability. And your teacher can tell us all the ways uh, in which you still showed up to class, you still did your uh, best work, it maybe just didn't work out in the way that you had hoped. So there are two different options there for who you might want to tap to write a recommendation letter for you. So that really is kind of a complete look at um, what will require from you within the application process and what some of those components look like. So the next thing, once you have actually um, you know, completed your application, you'll wanna think about what deadline you'll apply to. So Swanee has four different decision deadlines, uh, one early decision, one early decision two, one early action, and one regular decision deadline. Early decision is a binding decision deadline with the colleges you're applying to. Meaning if you apply early decision one or two to Solani and you're accepted, we expect that you'll enroll the following fall. It's a contract, it's a binding contract. So if you're applying early decision, you want to be 110% sure that Sewanee is where you want to go. That's really important because again, if you're admitted, you'll be joining us in the fall. Um, if you're applying early decision one, you're going to get a decision back from us um, before Christmas. So that deadline is November 15th. You'll have your admission decision uh, before you break for the Christmas holiday. Um, so it's really a nice um, opportunity for you to potentially be done before you start the second semester of your senior year. So if you're sure Swanee is where you want to go, I'd encourage you to apply early decision. Early action is a great option for those students who want to apply early, but don't want to have that binding component uh, to their application. So you can apply early action uh, by December 1, and we'll get a decision back to you by the end of January or early February, but you don't have to make a final admission decision about where you're going to go until May 1st, which is the National College uh, Decision Deadline Day. Um, you may choose to wait until February 1st to apply to our regular decision deadline. I, however, would encourage you, um, since you're starting this process early, I would encourage all of you to apply early during the process, whether it's to a binding decision deadline or not. It's always helpful to apply earlier, just so you have an opportunity to evaluate all of your options and if possible, uh, make a commitment to a school earlier than May 1. I think it's certainly gonna make your lives easier, the lives of your parents easier, and we'll give you some time to really then kind of uh, dig into the enrollment process uh, in, you know, to, at the school uh, which you chose. So some things to consider there. At Solani, if you're applying for need-based financial aid, you'll need to submit your FAFSA and your CSS profile. So your FAFSA is a federal form, the CSS profile is not, but both forms will need to be submitted by your decision deadline. So if you're applying early action by December 1st, make sure your FAFSA and CSS profile are in with your common application by that date. The FAFSA is available in mid-October, so you'll have plenty of time to complete that. Um, so make sure you don't forget about that CSS profile uh, since it's not quite as common as the FAFSA, but very straightforward and easy to complete. And there'll be a lot of overlap and in information between the FAFSA and the CSS profile. 
Um, every student that applies to Suwannee is automatically considered for the full extent of Suwannee's academic scholarships. So your application to Suwannee is also your scholarship application, no additional application required. So when we're evaluating each application, we're looking for not only admissibility, but also scholarship potential as well. And currently our scholarships range from $5,000 to full tuition room and board. So many of our students will receive some sort of academic scholarship to attend Suwannee. Um, over 80% of Suwannee students receive some sort of aid to attend. And the average financial aid package for an incoming student this past year in 2019 was around $30,000. Um, in addition to that, Suwannee has a commitment to meeting 100% of demonstrated need. This is something that very few colleges and universities across the country do, but it's a perfect representation of Suwannee's commitment to affordability and accessibility too for those students who want to be here and her, who are a good social and academic fit. What that means is that if the FAFSA and CSS profile come back to us um, and it says that your family's expected contribution from one year to the next is $20,000 and the cost of attending Swanee is $60,000 in average, um, we'll make up the difference between that $20,000 and $60,000 through a combination of scholarships, grants, and loans. So again, trying to make as uh, Swanee as affordable as possible for as many students as possible. Um, and that's something that's huge. So definitely keep that in mind as well. Um, when you're considering uh, Suwannee as a potential, um, a potential school. Um, so that's all the information that I have for you about um, applying. Um, that's amazing. I'm sorry to interrupt you. This, this is great. That that commit that that 100 commitment to demonstrated need though is a remarkable thing. And again, just like I, I wanted to underscore the discussion earlier about essay or about um, GPAs. Um, the idea that Swanee making that commitment is is something that I, I don't know many other, I don't know of any other school that can do that, can say that. I know that other schools do, so I'm not trying to be hyperbolic here, but I, I know it's a rare thing in our profession. So that, that's clearly uh, an important thing to underline. And also with the, with the FAFSA, um, and I'm curious your advice on this with that, um, some, you know, it's, it's a bit of a big, document to fill out and there's some questions that they ask do you recommend that everybody just fill it out whether they think they're qualified for fafsa support or not that's i hear this question from families they'll say like oh, that's a lot and we're not going to get it but we always at my other school we always encourage everyone to fill it out for a variety of reasons there so i'm just curious what your thoughts are on that great question and i, I would agree with you i would say that you have nothing to lose except for a little bit of time um, by filling out that fafsa um, and so if you, you know, if you have the ability to take the time to do it, I would, you never know, um, you know, what the answer might be. Um, and, and so certainly you could fill out that FAFSA and have a sense of, oh, I'm not sure that we're going to qualify for any aid. And in fact, you don't end up qualifying for any aid, but at least you've, you know, checked all the boxes and covered all of your bases. Um, and, and it's certainly not a lengthy process either. So I agree with you. I, I would encourage all of our families to submit that FAFSA. Awesome. Great. Thanks so much. Let me be quiet again. I just wanted to make sure I asked that question. No, I'm so glad. Well, and that was, I was wrapping up. So if, uh, oh, if there are questions you'd like to ask, go for it. Yeah, I, there was a question that, that came up from one of the students um, about what alumni are doing. So if you could talk a little bit about like what's what some of the, I mean, I know University of the South alumni are doing lots of things. So I, I know it's hard, that's its own presentation, but what are some of the things that alumni are doing and like how does the university stay connected with students and support them after they're finished in Swanee? Right, absolutely. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip back for a second into a part of um, the presentation that uh, we didn't cover today and that's uh, just about some outcomes. So, you know, like you said, what students are doing after they graduate. Um, so the top career fields for alumni currently are education, law, medicine, and finance. So many of our graduates are going into those sectors and those professions. And I always think it's interesting because when the value of a liberal arts uh, is often challenged in, in the media and you know, across the globe, I think it's because a lot of people think that, oh my gosh, well, my student or I'm going to major in philosophy and English and then gosh, am I gonna be able to find a job? And the answer is yes, you know, interestingly yeah. enough, um, for our students who are, um, you know, going into business and finance, one of the top majors that those students will pursue is actually English. Uh, wow. And the reason for that is that as a, um, you know, as someone in the business world, you need to be a strong communicator. 
you need to be able to effectively communicate with your clients. Um, and then additionally too, we find that a lot of them are, are engaged with international and global studies as well. Um, so especially for students that are interested in international business, having that knowledge of um, you know global trends and uh, different cultures and other things like that are so important. So it's that idea of an interdisciplinary uh, course of study. So to me, you know, the value of the liberal arts education is just, you know, endless, but uh, just one sort of practical ap practical application there. Um, you can see for our recent graduates and, and recognize we do not have completed data yet for the class of 2019. Uh, we will uh, by early August. Um, but for the class of 2018, and this information was taken just under a year out from graduation, um, you'll see there all of the different uh, careers by sector into which these students went. And then also too, for those students who went on to um, get graduate degrees right after graduating, you'll see that there. Recognize uh, when looking at those numbers that many of our students will take time between their undergraduate experience and graduate school um, you know, before applying, before enrolling. Um, a lot of graduate schools are wanting to see um, some you know, practical experience in the workforce um, so that students are really sure of what they want to do. And so if you feel like those numbers are small, recognize that those are only for students uh, that are going directly into graduate programs. And then another thing that's not reflected here as well are our students who are going on to do post-baccalaureate scholarships and fellowships. Like, the Fulbright, like um, the Rhodes Scholarship. And Suwannee over the years has had 26 Rhodes Scholars, which is more per capita than any yeah. other institution in the US. So we're doing a lot of things, we're all over the world, but yeah. um, but some information at least here about what some of our recent graduates are doing. That's great, thanks so much. And I, I know just as an aside to, to, to all of this, that one of the things that when we're talking to students about coming in the summer to come study at the music festival, is we talk about the location and the campus and the beauty of where every, where it is. And, you know, you know, I just add to the students that are watching and the students that will, will, will watch this later. Um, you know, I know from, from, for our faculty, for the students, for the parents that are engaged with the, the festival, the number one thing that, that we're not, that we're missing right now is not being in Swanee and that community is so beautiful in the mountain and the, and the opportunity to live in a, in a, in a really truly beautiful small town. And so I, I would, you know, to any of the students that are there, it's the highlight of my year is the time I get, get to spend there. I always enjoy coming down to visit during the, well, I come down to work during the year. I don't visit anymore, but you know, the, the chance to be there. And um, I, I would encourage everyone watching and, and all this, our students for the, for the festival, um, to schedule an appointment or, or go online and there's there's tons of virtual campus tours and ways that you can connect with the university uh, virtually and I know as soon as it's safe they're going to start wanting to bring folks back to campus again in real time so uh, make make every effort to do that it will be absolutely worth it and uh, whatever we can do to help in the summers we're, we're happy to do to uh, encourage students to attend Swanee so Nancy I want to thank you for your time and um, if there's anything else real quick to wrap up if not I'm really grateful to you for sharing all of this wonderful information with our students and um, look forward to, to, to getting back to whatever normal was for all of us. Absolutely. No, thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. And um, just to echo one more time what you said, please do go on our website and look at all those virtual options. And if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me or your admission counselor. All of our contact information is listed there. Um, we love engaging with students. It's one of our favorite things to do and we've missed some of that during this time. So we look forward to hearing from you and uh, best of luck in the coming year. Great, thanks so much, Nancy, appreciate it.